Hi guys and welcome back to Biolog. Hope you're having a great day and a great week. Now, today's video is going to be yet another special episode of the Not Too Late talk show. This is going to be episode 2 with a fellow science enthusiast Vishesh Gohar. Now, today we're going to be talking about a very interesting physics discovery which is not something we usually do on this channel since it's mainly about biology. So, make sure to like, share and subscribe to Biolog for more such interesting videos. And without further ado, let's begin. So, Vishesh, what will we be talking about today? Okay, so today we'll be talking about an exciting new discovery in physics made in 2020, and this was the breakthrough where a couple of scientists managed to find a room temperature superconductor. Hmm. So, what exactly is a superconductor? Right. So, I'm sure most of you have heard of a conductor. Put simply, a conductor is something that can conduct electricity. Uh, it's also known to conduct heat very well. So the issue with normal conductors is that they offer some form of resistance to the flow of current within them. That means that when current passes through it, there's something that is sort of preventing it from going, and therefore the current almost doesn't reach its full potential. You can say. So the superconductor, however, has this special property. Any substance that is a superconductor has zero electrical resistivity. What that means is the current can freely pass through that substance, and this allows us to make powerful devices. For example, superconducting magnets, which are used very often in levitating devices, but right now, more importantly, they're used in MRI machines, which are super crucial, especially in the field of neurology, where brain imaging is such an important thing to detect possible issues, especially tumors. Right. Exactly, Vishesh. Hmm. So, what's so special about this one then? Right. So we've already had experience with many superconductors before, and they were all great. I mean, they all work respectively in their fields, but there was one core issue with a lot of them, and the issue was that these superconductors could only display the superconductive property at temperatures. Very, very, very low. We're talking like minus a hundred degrees Celsius, and only recently have they even been able to bring it close to that zero degree Celsius mark. However, this superconductor, like we mentioned, can conduct at room temperature. What this means is that at temperature around fifteen degrees Celsius, it displays that same property of zero resistance, which is so much more economical and so much more easier to implement than minus a hundred degrees Celsius. I mean, can you imagine keeping something at a minus a hundred degrees Celsius in any room anywhere? That's insane, and the practical use is is well, it's non-existent because you can't reach that kind of temperature, sadly. However, with something like this. Where it is possible at room temperature, where it is possible in most scenarios to maintain something at fifteen degrees Celsius, these properties could be extremely useful for us. Hmm. Right. I think I've heard about this one. It was discovered in the University of Rochester. Now we know that electricity is the flow of electrons, right? When the electrons flow through the metal conductor. They collide with the positive atoms of the metal, and so there is friction, which causes heat to be produced. Just like when you rub your hands together, there is heat, right? There's warmth that is produced. So now this makes the energy loss very, very high. So due to high amount of energy losses, the transmission of electricity in power lines as well becomes extremely expensive. Okay, so. This superconductor was discovered at the University of Rochester by Dr. Ranga Diaz and Dr. Akshan Salamat. But before we talk about more about this compound, we let's go back a little bit. In 2018, a compound of hydrogen and lanthanum at high pressures was shown to be superconductive at minus 13 degrees Celsius, and in the grand scheme of things, that's fairly close to 15 degrees Celsius, and it's a possible temperature to maintain. But What's different about this compound is, unlike previous superconductors, this one is actually made of three materials, not just two. So it's made of carbon, sulfur, and hydrogen. Now, the main issue with this compound was that it also required a high pressure, albeit it had a low operating temperature. Its operational pressure was extremely high. However, this is still a study, 
And as studies go, things can change. And as said by Maluri Somaya Zulu, a high pressure material scientist at Argan National Laboratory in Lamont, Illinois, this study shows that if you carefully choose the third and fourth element of your superconductor, you could actually bring down its operational pressure. What this means is that at some point, it might actually be theoretically possible to have something that would operate at room temperature and a manageable pressure, which would be completely amazing. Uh, it would be a breakthrough in the field of physics, which so, and honestly, it desperately needs it to progress with these superconducting magnets, one of the main prospects of a superconductor. And this would be a huge addition to that. Hmm. Oh, wow. So that seems really interesting. Now, I've heard that these could lead to future prospects like levitating trains, but what would that mean for the world of physics and for us in general? Right. So exactly like you said, one of the possible future prospects is actually levitating trains. And it's part of the reason why this discovery was so popular, especially on places like YouTube and across many scientific forums, because Never have we imagined the possibility of like a true levitating train. Can you imagine that? Like out of a sci-fi movie, it looks like something out of one of those, you know, Avengers movies that you see, you see this levitating exactly. train and you get on that train and you're like, wow. So what this means for the future, not only for the crazy stuff like levitating trains, even the so-called simple stuff like our MRI machines, which we depend on so heavily in the fields of radiology and, and neurosciences, where these MRI machines, these MRI scans, mostly because of not only the operational cost, but also because of the fact of the maintenance of these machines, the cost for doing these scans is exorbitantly high. And most people can't afford that, sadly. And therefore, most people can't get access to a lot of important healthcare. But with the implementation of these superconductors, which can superconduct at my new room temperature, which means that the system itself does not have to be as complicated since it doesn't have to cool the substance down so much. And because of this, these superconducting magnets itself become a lot more easy to implement and hence the cost of operating and maintaining the machine would probably go down. And what would that mean? The cost for healthcare would go down. And so many implications like this would happen around the world. These superconducting magnets, I'm sure, are used in many production processes as well. So around the world, the cost of many goods will go down. And the amount of cool sci-fi inventions that we get, which I think most of you are probably excited for, is really going to boom. And the entire science world will change. It's really, the discovery sounds simple, but its implications are profound. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I completely agree. Uh, so yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. It was a really, really interesting chat with you, Vishesh. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. If you do, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to Biolog for more such exciting and interesting videos. And stay tuned for my next guests on the Not Too Late talk show. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.